water crisis in Cape Town, South Africa. Of course, the country is at the, under threat of running completely dry within 90 days. It could be the first city in the world to run out of water. And water management, of course, and supply challenges are indeed a global burden. And for more insight on this and to give the issue a bit of a global perspective, we're now joined by Deji Badmus in Nigeria and CGT and Stephanie Freed in Israel. Uh, Deji, I'll start with you first. Um, what kind of water supply challenges are being experienced in Lagos? And we use the comparison because, of course, this is a mega city in Africa. Well, to be candid, uh, Lindy, uh, the water crisis here is quite acute. Um, you, you just have about, uh, you have about 10%, just 10% of the population now, and probably less than that, uh, actually connected by uh, uh, public water supply. So you have only just 10% of the population actually collect, connected by uh, piped networks now. Uh, the, the, re the rest of the population actually provide their own water and they actually rely on natural resource, uh, you know, natural resource now to get their water. So you have a situation where virtually everyone in this city uh, actually drills borehole now to get water. So you have boreholes everywhere and um, that, that's a situation. So the, the water crisis here is quite acute, is quite serious and has been on for a very long time. And it's not just about this city alone. It's the same situation across um, the entire length and breadth of this country. Everyone uh, provides their own water for themselves uh, by drilling boreholes. Uh, the piped networks simply don't work or are not enough uh, to, to connect our homes. That's the way it is here, Lindy. Well, well let's go to Tel Aviv now, uh, where Stephanie Freed, of course, uh, is standing by. Stephanie, we know, of course, that Israel is largely a dry country, but it's hardly ever experienced a serious water crisis. What are the key aspects of its water supply strategy? Well, um, it's important, Lindy, to bear in mind that Israel is the number one country when it comes to wastewater management, reusing wastewater. In fact, 92% of Israel's uh, wastewater is recycled. Um, and Israel it exports the technology that they've developed, $2.2 .2 billion worth of water technology to the world. You talked about, you asked about the key elements we're talking about treatment, um, reservoirs, um, agriculture, drip technology. 75% um, of that wastewater that I just talked about, that goes to agriculture to use in, in growing. Um, desalination is huge for Israel, number one in the world in terms of desalination, desalination plants. So that's a lot of technology that's going into reuse of water, um, implementation of smart uses of water and then exporting that knowledge and technology to the world. Lindy? And coming back to you, Deji, just listening to some of those solutions that are being tried and tested and successfully executed in Israel. In your view, are authorities in Nigeria taking, you know, these kinds of, you know, advice and ideas in terms of being able to implement these kinds of measures to provide adequate water for its citizens? Well, authorities have always uh, t tried to, to, do, to do their best, but it's just that their best has not been good enough. Um, this is a country where you have uh, a ministry now for water resources, but um, you, you just don't get public uh, water supply. So you have a situation where everybody uh, just uh, provides uh, water for themselves. In Lagos State, for instance, um, what the government is trying to do now is to regulate, uh, to regulate the drilling of these boreholes. And as, as we speak now, um, the, the Lagos State government is carrying out enumeration exercise. It says it wants to expand uh, the, the, the pipe networks now to ensure that uh, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, those pipe networks now get to us more homes as possible. And it, it is trying to regulate the drilling, drilling of boreholes because uh, before now, I mean, this has been done indiscriminately. Now, uh, to drill a borehole in this city, you need a permit. And uh, that is generating a lot of controversy. As a matter of fact, when that law was passed, uh, a lot of people protested against it uh, and they're, they're just not happy that the government is not providing water for them and now they're providing water for themselves and uh, 
the government wants to collect, uh, wants people to pay uh, for it. But um, the Lagos State Government is trying to transform its uh, public water corporation. Uh, the public water corporation now is... Uh, well, according to it now, expanding its uh, network of pipes across the city. And, uh, but but it, it's a lot of work and it, it requires a lot of money and it, it will mm -hmm. take up so much time. So um, it, we, we just have to wait and see how all of that plays out. But to be candid, it, it's a serious challenge that uh, I don't think it's something that can be fixed uh, or overnight. Indeed. Uh, and Stephanie, just coming back to you, as we heard there from uh, Deji in Lagos, a lot of these water management solutions require a lot of work and a lot of money. Can some of these solutions that are being implemented in Israel, can they be replicated in parts of Africa? Absolutely, and they already are. And I mean, I just got off the phone with uh, uh, one of my associates at the uh, One Institute. It's the Galilee International Management Institute in uh, the northern part of this country. They are dealing with 40 different African countries, and it's a collaboration in terms of training, teaching, and, and about 1,500 delegates go back and forth on an annual basis, and, and we're talking about training in drip irrigation, in wastewater management, in pumping technology, rather than having people, the historical, going to fetch the water, developing devices to pump water. Um, so there is ongoing collaboration and teaching and learning and exchange back and forth, and that's been going on for years. So uh, yes, certainly um, that exchange, that cooperation, that learning um, is expected to definitely continue. Thank you so much. Uh, Stephanie Freed, they're live for us uh, in Tel Aviv. And of course, uh, Deji Badmos, they're live for us there in Lagos, Nigeria, on water management issues around the world. Thank you.